What's going on you guys? Hope you guys are doing well and I appreciate you guys being back for another one. We are getting into the next video which is going to be talking about coyote calling sequences and uh, using some coyote vocals. This is episode number five. If you guys haven't looked at the other ones make sure and go back in the playlist, check those out and be sure to subscribe, like this video and stay tuned for the future videos coming out in this uh, playlist in this series that we're doing. So getting right into it, today we're talking about coyote calling sequences, a little bit of vocals, and what's working for this time of year, which today is February 13th. So this is going to be kind of geared towards the uh, breeding season, January, February, early March. Like I've mentioned in some other videos that you guys have watched, uh, this is what has worked for me in the past, and I uh, just want to relay that information to you guys. A lot of different ways to do this, but this is just some different tips, some strategies, some sequences that I use to call in some coyotes and hopefully help you guys out as well. So we pull up to the spot, get gear out, walk out to our spot in the field. Uh, I like to stand there, be quiet for three, maybe four minutes, something like that. Typically speed that number up a little bit during tournaments just to get in and get out of spots. But on a regular night of hunting, you want the spot to cool down just a little bit, kind of get back to normal is the way I like to say it. You know, if you're hunting in daylight, uh, let the birds start chirping again. If you're hunting at night, uh, you can just kind of tell when things kind of settle down a little bit and uh, get quiet once again. So this time of year, what I typically always start out with is one of my mouth diaphragms. I'm a big believer of the MFK mouth diaphragms. Uh, I've got two of them in here. The one that I typically use the most is the pink or the red one. Uh, this is their competition howler. The other one that I use is the blackout howler, which like it says is black. So what I'll do, I typically already have this in my mouth, but typically start out my sets this time of year with just a simple lone howl, maybe two lone howls in a row. Sometimes I'll switch it up. I'll do a lone howl and then I'll also have on my e-call ready um, a lone howl to answer me back. Maybe a female lone howl, maybe um, a younger pup, a younger dog lone howl, whatever it might be, but I might... I might act like a pair answering each other. Um, just kind of depends, I mix things up, um, kind of different on each and every stand, but pop this in my mouth and this is what the first towel will kind of sound like. Like I say, I might just do that one time, I might do that twice. The nice thing about this is I can make this sound different than anything else. I can make it sound different each time. I can add in some barks. Um, just a lot of different variations with this diaphragm. So I'll let that set there. If I do it once or twice, whatever it is, answer it back with the e-call. I'll be quiet for a good five minutes after that. There's been lots of times whenever I've hit that how one time and just was dead silent and within two to three minutes see one working towards me and it's as easy as that on the other side of that nothing will happen within five minutes so then typically i'll do maybe one more lone howl and then be quiet for only about two minutes that time and then i'll move in to right into like breeding fights uh, just go into your category on your e-call and then choose something out of your fight category. Uh, breeding fights are big right now. So I'll pick my breeding fight, whatever it is that night, whatever it is that set that I'm using. And I'll let that play, kind of depends, probably three minutes maybe, something like that. But what I'll do is I'll always keep that call close to me, the remote close to me, and I'll work that volume. Um, at the beginning, it's going to be pretty quiet, and then I'll ramp it up after 30, 40 seconds maybe get it fairly loud, and then within the next 30 seconds or so, I'll work that volume back down. So it kind of sounds like there's different pitches, maybe they're completely stopping, might hit pause for just a little bit, but I'll go through that kind of sequence for about three, maybe four minutes, um, working that remote, you know, working the volume up, working it back down, maybe hitting pause for 10 seconds, 15 seconds, uh, go through that sequence there for three to four minutes, and then I'm quiet for another two to three minutes. Coyotes are very curious animals, so that silence kills them literally quite often. There's quite a few videos on my channel where I'm actually watching a coyote come into me or I'm actually shooting a coyote and it's just dead quiet. There's no sound working. That's because they're coming in whenever I'm in one of those pause periods, one of those silence periods. Uh, very curious animals are going to come in and check things out. 
Now on the flip side, it happens a lot whenever they're coming into rabbit distress, prey distress, or whatever it might be. But just letting you know, work the silence periods. Let there be times of, of just complete silence. So after that breeding fight, we're in that two minutes of silence or so. Uh, this time of year, I might move right into like uh, coyote whimpers or maybe some estrus chirps. Um, sometimes this period right here is where I might do on one set. Just depends on what's working that night. Um, I might do the coyote whimpers. I might do the estrus chirps, but then if I find out that's not working, this might be a little block right here where I throw in some distress, whether it be rabbit distress or bird distress. But I kind of work those two in the same in the same block. And what I mean by that is after that two minutes of silence or so after the breeding fights, uh, say we're doing coyote whimpers or estrus chirps, I'll kind of do the same thing. Hit play on that, start out fairly quiet and then work it up at a little bit steadier pace. Um, say I'm using my lucky duck that night. I think it goes up to 32. So say we start out on a six or an eight. Um, then by the time, you know, we're halfway through that, uh, three to four minutes of calling, we're probably up. Depends on size, size of the field and what the wind's doing that night, but probably getting up maybe that 20 range, something like that, 22. I typically don't get too much louder than that. Um, of course, if it's very windy, then we crank the volume up, but we'll let that go through probably three to four minutes, something like that. And then the same thing for um, the time period or a different set if I'm working in the rabbit distress or the prey distress. We're going to let that run three to four minutes. Once again, we're going to start out fairly quiet, six to eight range, and then slowly start bumping that uh, volume up on our remote to 20, 22, 26. Uh, just a hair louder if we're using the Fox Pro because I think it goes up to 40 on the scale instead of 32 for the Lucky Duck. But anyway, you want to start pretty quiet and then you want to slowly ramp it up. But what I'll do with that rabbit or bird distress is I'll ramp it up, you know, to that 20, 22 range and then let that run for 15, 20 seconds. And then I'll keep working that remote, you know, keep them on their toes, keep them guessing. Um, makes the pitch, the volume of the, the, the sound being portrayed to the coyote sound different to their ears. And uh, work that back down, you know, from maybe 20, 22 volume level back down to, to six to eight. Um, maybe just completely pause it for 10 seconds and then fire it right back up. But you run through that little, that little scenario there for three to four minutes probably. And then after that little sequence is over, once again, we're gonna go back to being quiet two to three minutes. Uh, at this point, we're probably looking at being on stand maybe 20 minutes or so, uh, somewhere around there. And then I'll end every single set with some sort of pup distress. Uh, there's lots of different versions of pup distress out there now. Whatever one, whatever one you think's working the best, just use it. Run it through probably three to four minutes as well. And once again, I like to manipulate that volume level. So we'll start out pretty quiet again, six to eight level. And then we're going to ramp it up uh, to that 20, 22, 24 type range and then we're going to work it back down maybe be quiet for about 10 seconds but we're going to go through that full sequence for another three to four minutes and kind of whole time manipulating that volume maybe let it run for 30 to 40 seconds at 24 26 volume and then slowly work it work it back down hit pause for 10 seconds just mix it up you know keep them on their toes keep them guessing keep them wondering what the heck's going on over there let's go check it out let's go get in on the fight. Coyotes are amazing animals. I think they hear 10 to 12 times better than the average canine, the average dog. Uh, I was reading an article one time years ago, um, might get this wrong just a little bit, but it was a coyote could hear a mouse under a foot of snow from 100 yards away. So keep that in mind when you're out, you know, calling, starting out with vocals, starting out with rabbit distress, don't just go out and blast the call right at, right at first. Coyotes have amazing sense of hearing and they pick up on different wavelengths, way, way different than what you and I hear. So keep that in mind. So that's kind of a, a calling sequence that works right now for me, always has in the past. Like I say, it's not gonna work every single night out. So don't, don't copy this down on a piece of paper and go out and do it exactly like I did and then come back tomorrow and post a comment that says your strategy doesn't work. <laughs> you gotta switch it up, uh, keep trying. That's the thing is just mix things up. 
don't don't overthink it. There's no magic button. There's no magic call that's going to work every single set. Um, those are just some sequences or a sequence that's worked for me in the past and wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, just to follow up on that, a few kind of tips. Uh, one, we've already talked about it, but don't go out very first call, very first how you do. Don't just go out max volume and blow the whole place out and scare everything off. And feeding off of that as well, if, if I stop at a spot that's a little bit smaller field with a lot of timber around it, I might start out with uh, some very quiet rabbit distress this time of year even before I howl. We're talking, you know, start out on level four, level six maybe. If it's a quiet night and it's a little 15, 20 acre field and you got timber around it, there could be coyotes 200 yards away and you have no idea. So get out, you know, start some real quiet rabbit distress, four to six volume, uh, ramp it up to maybe 10 or 12, and then uh, be quiet for three to four or five minutes and then start into that calling sequence that I just went through. Uh, tip number two would be just to mix things up. Even though I gave you that full sequence, use different calls, different strategies within that sequence. Kind of use the same logistics of it. You know, start out with that howl, get into your breeding fights, get into your uh, estrus chirps, your, your coyote whimpers, and then <clears throat> excuse me end it with the pup distress but use different calls don't night in and night out use the exact same lone how the exact same breeding fight pick different calls within your library uh, if you guys want to see any future videos on how i utilize these more comment down below let me know be happy to answer any questions you have on mouth diaphragms this is a great tool right here because you can manipulate it make it sound exactly how you want to instead of hitting play on a button on a remote and being dealt with that and then the final tip tip number three for this video is just don't overthink it you know kind of put yourself in the coyote shoe as weird, as weird as that sounds picture it like a kid on a playground or something you know whenever i say it i get out and i do some lone house with the mouth diaphragm or the electric uh, electronic call i don't get out and act like the biggest badass around the biggest bully on the playground you know how many people want to come and interact with the kid that's always trying to steal your lunch money on the playground. <laughs> Nobody likes him. Nobody wants to come and see what he's up to, see what's going on. If I get out and I howl, a female lone howl, real subtle, nothing aggressive at all, you know, Billy's over in the corner. He's like, hey, yeah, let's go hang out. Let's see what she's up to. See what's going on. Sounds cool. Let's go hang out. You know, put yourself in the coyote shoe. Sounds weird, but don't overthink it. People getting way too caught up in trying to kill coyotes. Yeah, there's strategies that work. There's strategies that don't work. There's times to be aggressive with the howler, with the electronic call, but you don't want to start out your stands like that. You just want to get out there and say, hello. You know, you want to introduce yourself. Say, hey, what, what are you guys doing? Who all's out there? Somebody answer me back. Somebody come see me. Be friendly. Be the friendly coyote. Don't be the bully on the playground. <laughs> Uh, that's just kind of worked for me over the years. You know, hopefully it helps you guys out. And another big thing is don't get discouraged. We all go through dry spells. It's going to happen. Uh, it's part of hunting. That's why they call it hunting and not killing. That's it for today, guys. Like I said, I don't want to draw these videos out too long because we got lots more coming. We've already got four behind us. Make sure and stay tuned for more. Any questions with this video on coyote vocals, coyote calling sequences, let me know comment down below. Make sure and subscribe and like this video because there's going to be tons more in the future. Appreciate you guys being along for the ride. Happy hunting. Be safe and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.